Hello, Merry Christmas. And with it being the Christmas season, I figured we'd do something Christmassy today. So last night I recorded some jingle bells, sleigh bells, and I thought we'd build a little sample library with those samples today. So I've got a highest project here, it's called Jingle Bells. And the only thing in here is the XML project file and the samples. I haven't mapped them yet. So there's a whole bunch of samples here and uh, you'll get all of these. Uh, there'll be a download link in the video description. And if you're following me on Patreon, you'll also get this extras folder, which has a bunch of samples in that I haven't finished cutting and we're not going to use in the project, but there's a bunch of extra samples there that you can use in your own projects. So I recorded essentially a bunch of articulations, but I didn't really know what names to give them, so I just called them Type 1, Type 2, Type 3, but each of these contain samples that are essentially different articulations. And I'll just show you the names I'm using. So if I zoom in on here, uh, there we go. So they all start with Jingle Bells, underscore Type 1, or Type 2 or whatever, so it's the articulation. Then a note number, so 60 for all the Type 1s, they're going to go on note 60. And this is just for the auto mapper. We'll probably actually move them to different notes, but for the auto mapper, these are all going on note 60. So I made a vague attempt to sort of create these at different dynamics. So we've got some softer ones and some uh, slightly louder ones. So this one says uh, dynamic one, this one's dynamic two. I think, uh, yeah, that's the dynamic for this one. And then the last part is the RR. So RR1, RR2, RR3, and RR4. And then, yeah, that repeats. So there's four round robins and three dynamics for type one. Okay, and if we have a look at another one, if we go to uh, Type 2. So this one, Type 2, these are mapped to Note 62. Or they will be mapped to Note 62, but we'll move them around. And these only have one dynamic and six round robins. And let's just pick another one. Uh, so this one's got uh, one, two, three, four dynamics and four round robins. So you get the idea. They, they all use the same naming convention, and this will just make it quicker when we use the auto mapper. Now you'll notice they have different numbers around Robin, so some have four, this one, this one only has one round Robin, this one has eight round Robins, and we're going to use Heise's built-in group-based round Robin, we're not going to do any uh, scripting with the round Robin, so what we'll end up doing is for the ones that have less round Robins, uh, like this one's only got four, we'll end up doubling the number of groups for it, so we'll actually use all eight groups, but we'll just like duplicate the samples. So it won't use up any more RAM because it'll be referencing the same samples. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we get there. Okay, let's uh, go into our project and start constructing this. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do yet with the GUI, so we'll tackle that when we get there. So I'll start off by adding a global modulator container. don't know if we'll need it yet, but it's there if we need it. Then we'll add a container, and in our container we'll put our sampler. I'm going to rename this to Sampler Zero. I think we're only going to have one sampler but I'll name it Sampler Zero, and then if I do decide to add others, it's uh, got a better naming convention. Okay, and uh, we'll close the scripting view, and now we're in our sampler workspace, so we'll start mapping these samples. So we'll start um, with type one, and actually let's declare the number of round robin groups we want first. So I think the most groups we're going to need is eight. So we'll put eight in there, so now we've got eight groups, and we can start mapping, so I'll just Select all of those and drag them in. We'll use the file name token parser. So the type we can ignore. Uh, this one, this is the key. So yeah, that's that single key and it's a number. So that's all correct. The dynamic, this is going to be the velocity spread. So we're just going to use velocity for dynamics. We're not going to do any crossfade or anything like that. And this is going to be set to custom because it's a word plus a number. So if we set it to custom, highs figures out what the numbers are. And then with the round robin, we're going to set that to RR group. And again, it's already put it in as custom. So hopefully that will just work. So this is telling us that there was eight groups and now there's only going to be one group. So that kind of implies that the RR group thing in there didn't work. So let's just check. So we'll click cancel on that. So the first group has one set of samples. Yeah, so it did work. So that message was just wrong. And then nothing. Yeah, okay, so that's good. And then we'll do the next one. And we'll do the same thing. Let's see. Um, yep. Yeah, so we don't have to change anything. We can just hit OK. And as long as we click Cancel, it won't try and change the number of groups we have. So I'm going to click this group that's already selected, and now it selects all of the groups. 
I'm going to highlight that. So I'm selecting all of the samples that are mapped there and I'm going to change the high velocity to 127. Okay, and I'm just going to speed through the video here, I think. Okay, and that's a, all the samples mapped. We've still got a bit of adjustment to do in here, but that's the more map for now. So I'll click on save. And I'm going to call this just articulations.xml. Okay, so if we go through now, we can see that we have different numbers of samples for different um, articulations. So because we're using Heise's built-in round robin, it's going to play each of these groups one at a time. And obviously if it gets to this and there's no sample here, um, let's say for uh, the middle C sample, if we play middle C and it's playing group eight, then we're just going to get silence. We don't want that. So we need to duplicate some of these samples to uh, fill in the blanks here. So I'm going to go to the project folder, go to the sample maps folder, and I'm going to open this in a text editor. Okay, so we could do this in highs and do the copy and pasting in there, but it's going to be easier to do it in the text editor. Um, so let's see, there's our sample uh, type one, type one, type one, type one. So we just need to duplicate all of the type ones. So it's up to here. So we just need to copy all of this. So control C on there. And then we paste it in here. And I'll just uh, tidy up the formatting on this. And then let's see. So we've got the RR group here is set to one. So we need to change all of these. Uh, we're going to shift them up. So they, it's going to be five, six, seven, and eight. So there are a few ways to do this, but I think this will be the quickest way. So in, um, I'm using Atom here, the Atom text editor, but this works in a lot of text editors and IDEs. I'm just pressing Control D to select other instances of the same um, text. So I can change that to five, and then I can press down on my cursors, change that to six, change that to seven, change that to eight. And I'll press Control S there to save. So now if we load this back in, we might have to restart highs, but I don't think we do. If we load that back in, we should now have that first one populated. No, we do have to restart highs. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so middle C should now be populated for all of them. There we go. So it's it's reading those updates. So this is what we're trying to do so that every single group is populated for each of the keys we've, we've mapped. So now that I know that we have to restart highs after it, I'll just close highs now. Okay, so now we do the same for type two which is type one, type one, type one, where's type two? There's type two. This again has four RRs, but I'm seeing here, actually, these ones are set to zero for some reason. So something strange has gone on there. Um, actually, it doesn't have four RRs, so look, R5, R6. So yeah, something weird's gone on, but that's, um, that's fine. We can fix that here. So this should be five, and that should be six. And let's see, five and six. And then, oh, we're down to type three there, actually. That's type three. So it was just these ones. Okay, so this isn't going to be double. Um, we only need two extra RRs for type two. Well, now, we don't want to put one and two at the end because then it's going to be playing one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, and then it'll play one and two again. So let's put three and four. We'll duplicate those two and we'll put that at the end. So these are going to be in group seven and eight. So it's going to play through um, R1, R2, R3, R4, five, six, then three, four, one, two, three, four. So that'll be all right for our purposes. Now that you've seen how one of these is done, I'm just going to speed up the video to do all of the rest. Okay, and that's all of them done. So that to me, feels faster than doing it in highs and copying the groups, uh, copying the samples and moving them between groups. Uh, but if you prefer doing it in highs, do it in highs. Um, so hopefully I've done that right. Hopefully I didn't make any typos and all the groups will be mapped correctly and we'll find out now when we launch highs again. So I'll select our sample map and we'll zoom in a bit. And let's have a look. Each of these groups should now be fully occupied
Yep, looks like we've got it spot on. So if I play a key, just make sure my MIDI input is set correctly. Uh, yeah, let's ch channel one that. Okay, so if I play C, we should hear this one. Yeah, sounds good. We can also see it's progressing through the round robin groups here. This is a sort of jingly one. And velocity isn't linked to volume yet, so there's no change in volume really uh, when I'm playing these different velocities. We're just hearing the different samples being triggered. So let's uh, add a velocity modulator um, into our sampler. So in the gain section, we're just going to add a velocity modulator here. I want to do something like that. And set the intensity to around there. That should be good. I think I'll increase the intensity on that. Let's try it about there. Okay, now um, when I cut these samples, I did actually cut them quite accurately, but as you can see, they're not so accurate now. And I think that's because um, the noise reduction plugin I used um, added a bit of latency to each of these samples. So we're going to use the auto trimmer just to cut these down a bit to uh, get the sample starts more accurate. So I'll press Control A to select all the samples, go to Tools, Trim Sample Start, zoom in here. We'll add some. Uh, so the offset, that's like the seek area where it's going to look for the sample start or for the silence. And we're just going to drop this down. I usually put it down to about 26. Let's see if that's, yeah, that's looking about right. Yeah, 26 seems to be pretty much spot on. So I'm just going to go through these samples now one by one and adjust the start positions just to refine them a bit. So these should be a, have a bit more of a sharper attack now. And you know what, I'm going to increase that velocity modulator. Let's just stick it all the way up. Yeah, okay, let's go with that. So we'll save that, we'll save our project. Um, now let's reposition some of these samples. So that's on C0, that's fine, but I'm going to move the low key down one and the high key up one. So now it covers three uh, keys and we'll get three slightly different tones. I'm noticing that round robin has a bit of a delay on it. Okay, so I'll just tidy that up. That's better. And we could spend hours tidying up the samples like that, and that's kind of one of the um, one of the joys or the chores of uh, building sample libraries is all the time you need to take to go through each sample and make sure the starts are perfect. So I'm just going to go through each of these now and make sure they are each covering three keys. Okay, so each of these is now covering three notes. Now we could add some velocity crossfading, but since these samples are quite different to each other, even on the same uh, articulations, I think we'll just get chorusing and phasing. So I don't think it's a good idea. So we'll just leave them with these sort of distinct bands. And now we've got the samples mapped, we can begin building the interface. So I'm not doing any key switching for this because all the samples are unpitched essentially. So there's no point in doing key switching. We just have them mapped to different keys and the round robin is taken care of. So anything we do on the interface is fairly straightforward and it's just for our own enjoyment. Uh, let's add some envelope controls. So actually we've only got the, we've got the default envelope. Uh, let's replace that with an ADSR. ADSR is always more fun. So we'll add it before our velocity mod. So there's our ADSR, and we'll add a floating tile on our UI and set that to 
ADSR graph. We'll copy this name and we'll paste it in here and click apply. So now we can see our graph on the UI there. So that's nice and straightforward. Let's, um, let's add a container to our UI actually. Um, sorry, a panel to our UI, which will act as the container for our controls. And I'll call it PNL container. And we'll just make this the full width and height of the UI. And we'll get rid of all the colors. So this is just a panel that's acting as a container. And we'll put our floating tile inside of it. And I'll rename the floating tile FLT for floating tile, AHDSR. Okay, I'll put that somewhere around there for now. Okay, what controls should we have? Um, we'll have the attack. I think we'll just add attack and release controls. Or should we add all, all of them? Oh, let's add five controls, why not? So within our panel, we'll have a slider. And we'll call this KNB. A HDSR zero and the text can be A for attack and the mode can be time and the default for this one will set to two milliseconds. Okay, and then I'm just going to actually I'll resize it. I want this to be a square, so we'll make it uh, 40 by 40. Okay, so this is our attack. So I'll press Control D to duplicate that. So there's our attack and hold. Control D, decay, sustain, release. Okay, now the sustain one, that's going to be decibels, not time. So we change that. And we'll have the default for that to something like minus three. The release is time. We'll default that to 550. And I forgot what the default is for these two. So let's see, hold 10 milliseconds decay 300 milliseconds. So we'll just go with that sort of standard there. Okay, and I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to click this button here to align them and then this button here to spread them evenly. Okay, so we'll change the text on these. So this one will be D. No, it won't, sorry, it'll be H. This one will be D. This will be S and this will be R. And then we need to connect them all to the module. So in here, I'm going to select AHDSR envelope one, click on the first one. And for the parameter, we're going to select attack. Second one, hold, third one, decay. You get the idea. And then we'll just uh, go to our script, just hit F5. So all of that is sort of set in stone. Okay, so now these knobs will be controlling the AHDSR. Okay, we can't see any output, um, any values for these knobs. So let's change that, we'll select them all. Go down to show value pop-up and select above. Okay, I'm liking that longer time on the release. So let's set the default actually to 1,500. Yep, okay, I'm happy with that. We're going to style all this soon and make it look nice, but we'll just uh, I'll put it down there for now. In fact, let's add another panel in here that will contain the uh, all the H HDSR stuff. So we'll just call this FO. Um, PNL AHDSR. And then all of this stuff is going to go inside that panel. And we'll resize that, something like that. And just move these controls up so they're in the panel. Okay, now, now we've got everything in this one panel that's related to that module. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is add uh, some reverb controls. So we'll add another panel. 
Let's make sure it's within our container. And we'll call it PNL Reverb. And I think all we'll have in here is just a wet dry knob. So I'll duplicate one of the ones in the ADSR. I'll drag that up to the reverb panel. Call this can be reverb wet. And this is going to be, a, uh, I think it's normalized percentage. And uh, do you know what? Let's just check. We'll add the reverb. So we'll add it at the container level. So we'll add a simple reverb. And yeah, it's this one here, the percentage based wet level. That's what we're going to control here. So we'll set that to, oh, I need to compile the script now that we've added that new module. So we'll set this to the simple reverb and the wet level. And again, we'll compile that and we'll just check if that's the correct one or if we need to change it, let's see. Oh, that's correct. Okay, there we go. And we'll set the default value to um, 0.2, so about 20%. Okay, so that's the default value. So now we'll have a bit of reverb on there. Okay, so I think that's all we really need in this, just the reverb and the ADSR. So we'll just position these and uh, add some styling to it. So uh, how do we want to do this? Do we want them next to each other? Yeah, let's do them next to each other and we'll make our UI sort of like a, a thinner one. I'll leave a bit of room there for a header or something. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do yet. But we're going to go for like a flat UI design. And yeah, something like that. And oh, maybe we'll do the controls vertically. That might be interesting. If we've got enough room for that. Yeah, I think we can do it that way. Okay, and then I'm going to select all these controls and press this button here, which will distribute them vertically like that. I'm going to sort of position them roughly there for now. And that can go there. Okay, now the reverb feels a bit naked. I think we should add something else to the reverb. So we've got the wet dry. What other controls do we have under the reverb? Damping. Yeah, let's have one for damping. And we'll set the default of this to 60. Uh, there's no point in the stereo width control because these are mono samples anyway. But we will add a room size control. And I'll set the default to 0.8. I think I put in, yeah, I put in the wrong value. That should be 0.6. Okay. And then we'll just change the text on these. So that is the wet level. That is the damping. And this is the size. Okay, I'm gonna put that one. I want this to sort of be in line with that. So this has a Y of 205. So that needs a Y of 205. And then this one I want to be in line with this top one. Uh, actually, I'll have it in line with the second one. So that's a Y of 62. And then I'll select these and distribute. And then I just need to rename these controls. And I was going to make this a smaller UI, but now that I think about it, we've got room here for a preset browser. So let's add a preset browser. So I'll rename that FLT preset browser, and we'll just adjust a few of these settings here. So we'll have the save button. We don't want the expansion one. We'll have the folder button. We don't want the notes. So we'll press, I will type false for that. There we go. Um, edit buttons, add button, rename button. Yeah, we'll have all of those. Number of columns, let's just have two columns. And yeah, I think we're good to go with that. Um, oh, we'll get rid of the favorites button. We don't need that. There we go. And I should put this inside its own little panel as well. Uh, 
There we go, something like that. Okay, so now we need to style this. So let's open our script. So we're going to add namespaces here. We're going to have a namespace called look and feel. So this is where we're going to put all our styling stuff. We're going to have a namespace called reverb. We'll have a namespace called AHDSR. And we'll have a namespace called presets. Or we could call it preset browser, I guess. I'll just call it presets. It's less to type. Okay, and I'll hit F5 on that. So I've got our namespaces now. So the first thing I want to do is style the knobs. So we're going to need a look and feel object. And we're going to use local look and feel. So it's going to be a const, uh, we'll call it rotary knob, I guess, equals, let's give us a bit more room here. Content dot create local look and feel. I won't bother calling it rotary knob. It's too much to type out. Let's just call it knob. So I'll register function and the one we want is I think it's draw rotary knob actually. Oh, let's see. Rotary slider. That's the one. Okay, and then we're going to assign this look and feel to all of the knobs on our UI. And we're going to do that in a little loop. So we'll have for x equals content dot get all components. And because we've named all of our knobs sensibly with k and b at the beginning, we can just use that for the regex. So we can do k and b star. So that will get all of the knobs. So then we can do x dot set local look and feel. And we can set that to knob. Right, let's have a look there. Oh, that should be in, not equals. There we go. Okay, so they, they all vanish at the moment because we haven't actually populated this function yet. Now, I'm terrible at trigonometry, so when it comes to drawing rotary sliders, I rely on other people to help me with that. And I've got some code here from another project which I'm going to paste in for this look and feel function which will draw a rotary slider. And I'm just seeing if there's anything I need to change or if it's all going to magically work. I think it'll magically work. So I'll hit F5 and there's our sliders. Yeah, that worked. Beautiful. So it's taken the colors from the color properties so we can change those. So we haven't decided what sort of uh, color scheme we're going for, but it's Christmas. So I'm guessing red and green is going to make some sense here. So let's have a Ah, that sort of green should be okay. And for the red, is it that red? No, it's not taking that one. Is it this one? Ah, it's this one. Okay, so I think red might be a bit horrible against that green. What about yellow? Ah, yellow's not too bad. Now it's looking a bit lizardy. What else do we have? Blue. Or white even? Ah, oh, white works. Yeah, let's go with white. Okay. Right, so that was nice and easy. All the knobs styled in one go. Um, actually, there should be a shadow on those. Oh, there is a shadow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's good. Now, it'd be nice if we had some labels for these knobs, because currently we don't know what they do. So that's going to happen in the namespace for each of these. So let's do the reverb one first. So we need to get a reference to the panel. And I also want to get references to each of the reverb knobs. So let's do that here as well. So these are going to be can be reverb. Um, so cons can be reverb. And we're going to use that get all components again. So it's going to be content dot get all components with can be reverb in the name. And I'll hit F5 and we just check that's worked. We should have in our namespace, can be reverb should have three knobs in there. So there they are. So it's a really nice way of uh, getting those. And now we're going to need a paint routine. So PNL reverb dot set paint routine function G. So now we've uh, added, assigned a paint routine, our panels disappeared. Uh, so we should assign a background color to our panel. So let's just 
get the sides of our panel. G dot fill. I will do a rounded rectangle. And for the corner data, we'll actually use the border radius property of the panel. So this dot get border radius. And then for the color, G dot set color, we'll use the background color of the panel. Okay, so we get a rounded rectangle. I don't like the gray. Um, uh, we should set the background color for our main panel first of all. Let's go for something like that. And oh, actually, we don't have a paint routine for this, so it's going to be the item color we're setting here. Oh, well, that's a bit too bright. Let's tone that down a bit. There we go, something like that. Okay. And then for the reverb panel, we'll, uh, not the item color, we'll use the same, but we'll brighten it up a bit. There we go. And we'll, we'll use this same color actually for the other two panels. So the, these two. So that, it won't appear yet because we haven't done the paint routines for it. Okay, and now we want to draw, let's draw a title actually for this panel. So it's the reverb, G dot sec, uh, font. I'm not sure what fonts I've got loaded on here, but we'll just go with the default, which is oxygen. Set it to 18, G dot set color. This dot get text color. G dot draw line text. Reverb. The area we're going to use our A object, this one here. It's going to be A0, A1, A2, but for the height, we'll just put something like 30. And then we'll have it centered. Okay, let's change the text color because that's too dark. Let's see if red would work here. Red's always too bright, isn't it? Let's uh, dull it down a bit. We don't want pink though. We want something festive. Let's try that. Ah, that's all right. That's not too offensive. Okay, and we'll apply this text color to the other panels as well. Okay, and now we've got our three reverb knobs in this const here. So we're going to loop through that for i equals zero, i is less than can be reverb dot length, i plus plus. And now we're going to draw the text. We'll set the font again, actually, g dot set font. And it can still be oxygen, but we'll change the font size to uh, 14. We'll do this outside the loop because it only needs to be done once. And then we're going to draw the text and the text will be can be reverb i dot get text. So we're going to get the text property of each of these knobs. And then where are we going to position it? So let's put the let's move the knobs over to the left and put the text on the right. Would that look okay? Now we'll find out. So we're going to position the text to the right. Uh, maybe I'll move the left. We'll see. For the area, so we're going to use the right hand side of the knob. Um, so it'll be A0. Oh, actually, we'll just use the knob. What we'll do is we'll put the knob in a variable. So it can be reverb. Uh, so we're getting the reference in, in this variable instead of having to write this out every time. And then here I can just change that to can be. Actually, let's shorten it further. Let's just go K. We know what it means. And then for the area, it's going to be K dot get X plus K dot get width. 
And then for the Y, we want it centered with the knob. So it's going to be k.get y. That's going to be a slightly complicated one. k.get height. Uh, yeah, okay, add the height plus k.get height divided by 2. Sorry, that should be minus k.get height divided by 2. Okay, so I think that should center it if I've got the maths right there. And then the width. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We can. What's the width of this panel? Uh, 120. So if we put the width of something like 50. Okay, and let's see. And the height. Um, actually, I've overcomplicated this. If we just set the Y to the top of the knob and the height to the height of the knob, it should be centered. K dot get height. Oh, yeah, like that. Okay, so now I'll hit F5. Uh, it's not too bad. Okay, let's add something onto that X value though. So we're not touching it here. So I'll add maybe 10 onto there. There we go. Now, should we left align them or should we right align them? Let's see what they look like left aligned. Mm, I kind of like that, but I think maybe right aligned is better. Maybe right align and put the knobs on the right. Uh, oh. I'll stick with left aligned. Yeah, we'll make a decision. Left aligned. I can see, I don't know if it's due to this font I'm using, but it's not vertically aligned properly. So I'm just going to subtract something from the height. I'll subtract 10. Yeah, that looks all right now. Okay. So that's our reverb done. Nice and festive. If you're on Windows, by the way, these uh, font sizes will probably be slightly different. Windows tends to show them slightly smaller than Mac and uh, Linux does, so you might have to adjust these font sizes. Okay, now we'll do the same for the AHDSR. So I'm going to take all these knobs and move them over. And then I'm actually just going to copy everything we've got in our reverb namespace and put it in the AHDSR namespace, but I'm going to change this to KNB AHDSR. So you can see why I use this naming convention, by the way, or at least I hope you can. It uh, makes it really easy to uh, sort of do this bulk programming so you don't have to um, repeat yourself a lot. So this will be PNL AHDSR. And the text will be, now here's something I've done which I shouldn't have done is I've hard coded the text reverb, right? I did it here, reverb. What I should do is set this as the panels text. Reverb, and then I can just read it from the panel. So I'll be this dot get text. And then I can use the same thing for the HDSR. Um, if I was sort of working on this in, in a, a proper project, one that I was heavily invested in, I'd uh, probably combine uh, this into a single function because I'm repeating myself here. This HDSR paint routine is essentially the same as the reverb one. So there's no point in writing two things that are the same. The only thing that changes is this knob stuff. So I'd, I'd probably do this differently um, if I was doing it again, just to avoid repeating myself. The main problem with repeating yourself is if you make a mistake in one block and you copy and paste it somewhere else, then that mistake has been transferred or if you need to make a change to one block because you want to do it slightly differently, then you've got to make that change in another place as well. Whereas if you're reusing the same code, you only have to make the change or the fix one time. So it's uh, it reduces code maintenance, but for this small project, it's fine. Okay, so we'll hit compile here. There we go. And, oh, we need to change the text of the uh, panel. And we'll hit F5. So it's really nice doing it this way. We didn't have to do any extra coding there. And we'll do the same thing for the um, preset browsers panel, but obviously the preset browser doesn't have any knobs. So we have to get rid of that extra bit of code. We don't need this stuff here. And we're probably going to have to move this around. So let's see. Um, so I kind of like the, the height of everything here. So uh, do I move stuff up? It'd be nice to put a little title up here. So I think let's just extend our interface a bit, actually. Let's 
change it to uh, 650. Let's try that. I'll just extend this container. There we go. Now I've got a bit more room to work with. So now I can increase the size of the preset browser panel. I can move the preset browser down a bit. Uh, that's not the one I wanted, this one. There we go, and extend it. Something like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so I'll hit compile on that. And I've missed something out here. Oh, okay, yeah, I need to change this to PNL preset browser. And I need to change the text there to preset browser. I will just call it presets, that'll be fine. There we go. Okay, so I could probably improve the spacing here because the, the gap between the presets and these two is like tiny, whereas the gap between reverb and AHDSI is quite large. So let's just increase the width of this panel. Uh, roughly around there seems good. And hit F5. Okay, now we can move these knobs over slightly to the right. Okay, it's coming together nicely. Right, let's recolor the um, HDSR envelope. So can we get the red and green theme continued here? So what's this one for? That's for the outline. Okay, let's have a red outline. Let's not make it so vibrant, something like that. And this is for the inner color, so we'll get that green going on there. Yeah, something like that should do. And I'll tell you what we're missing. We don't have a keyboard. Don't have an on-screen keyboard. Do I make the interface even higher? I think I do. Okay. So if we make it 700, then we can have a keyboard that is 50. That shouldn't be too extravagant. Okay, so let's add keyboard floating tile. FLT keyboard. Keyboard. And I said we'll make this 50. No, nope, not 5, 50. Thank you. And let's see, the lowest key will put us uh, 36. That should be fine. Um, use vector graphics. We want custom appearance or something. Where is it? Um, default appearance. We want to change that to false. Hit F5 on that. And that, that way it resizes, basically. There we go. We get a nice little keyboard in there. I'll make it a little bit uh, shorter. Make it 50. Okay. So if I press a key, so middle C's down here, that doesn't look so great. Where's the top key? Actually, yeah, that's, that's not bad because it puts it right in the center. Let's also add the octave numbers onto the keyboard. So we'll set that to true. And you can't really see that it's tiny, but that's okay. We're not going to style the keyboard today. We'll just stick with the sort of uh, default one. But we will color the keys. All right, this is coming together nicely. Uh, now the preset browser, let's see what we can do here. Let's get rid of the background perhaps. And we've got the green thing going on, but I think we should have the same red outline that we've got for the floating, uh, for the HDSR. <clears throat> that doesn't show up so well. Okay, maybe we'll go with the green. Uh, that's not bad. Okay. And I think we do need some sort of background. So let's just do a darker version of this. Uh, we could draw it. That'd be nicer. But uh, let's see what it looks like. Just doing it this way. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Oh, yeah, that's all right. And the text color. We'll leave that white. I think this would be nicer if we had rounded corners and if we um, if, if we actually styled this with look and feel. 
but that's a video for another day, I think. Okay, and we'll put this same background actually on the ADSR so it, it sort of matches. So we'll copy that. There we go. So now it's not just out there on its own. It looks a bit darker on the ADSR, so let's adjust that slightly. Try and get those colours to match. A little bit darker. Okay, I think I should do. Great, now we need to add a title to our container. So we'll add a namespace for our container. I'm just going to copy the reverb namespace. So we'll change that to container. PNL container. Get rid of this knob thing. Get rid of all that. Change the text size to 22. We don't need a background color for this, so get rid of, oh, actually, yeah, we do need a background color, but we're just going to do fill all. So we'll do g dot fill all, this dot get bg color. So we'll have to assign the background color. So copy the item color to the background color. And we need that red color for the text. Where is it? There it is. Copy that to the text color. Okay. Jingle bells. Uh, let's increase that font size. Let's try. No, oh, too much, too much. Okay. Let's try that one. Yeah, that's right. And now we'll nudge it down a bit. Uh, we'll just increase the height of it, actually. I'll have the same effect. So that's too much. There we go. Lovely. Okay, so the last thing to do is... Actually, let's, let's change the size of this text. Can you see how the text is tiny? So the function we use to change the text, I've just copied it to my clipboard. It's uh, content.setValuePopup set value pop-up data. Uh, so colors, let's just see. This is just something I've copied from another project. So I'll hit F5. So that's nice and chunky, but I don't like uh, the font it's using. Um, let's just try some serif. See if that's installed on here. So we'll just go with the default oxygen. So yeah, you might want to play around with the font so that it um, is more centered. This particular font, Oxygen, is always slightly lower, which is why we had to adjust these uh, knob positions. Uh, but I think that'll do. It's nice and big. We'll leave the colors as they are. It's nice and clear what they're showing, so that's okay. And the last thing we'll do is color the keyboard. And we'll create a namespace for that. Namespace keyboard. And then let's just give ourselves a bit more room here. And we'll just run through each key. So for i equals zero, i is less than 128, i plus plus. And then, okay, the keys that we've mapped to, we could get it, we could get the script to figure out which keys are mapped, but we'll just uh, sort of hard code it. So it's, let's see, 59 to 82 is what we want. The low key 59, the high key 82. So we can say if i is greater than or equal to 59 and i is less than or equal to 82. So we're in that range. Engine.set key color. And then i is the, the number we want for the uh, key. And it's going to be colors.with alpha. So we get some transparency. Colors.blue and maybe 0.3 and we'll copy that let's give ourselves a bit more room and we'll put else colors dot black but 0.2 there perhaps and we'll see how that looks yeah it's all right let's uh, 
change that to 0.2 actually. And that's 0.3. And uh, let's go a bit higher even, 0.5. We want to show which keys don't have anything mapped really quite clearly, but we don't want to go too dark. I think 0.5 was right. And actually, let's make these keys green. There we go. Keeping that festive theme going on. Okay, and there's our little jingle bell instrument. Now it's hard for me to tell with um, how I've got the audio set up if the volume's okay on this, but I'm just looking at the meter up there and it seems okay. But if you get this project on your system and the volume doesn't sound quite right, you can tweak it, tweak the velocity curve and stuff like that. One more thing we'll do, just so I can show you this. Um, it doesn't matter so much with a project of this size, but when you come to larger projects, each of these namespaces should be in a separate file. You don't want to keep them all just in one file like this. So what you do, you select your namespace, right click, select, move selection to external file, type in the name of your namespace, type it exactly the same as you spelt it here. And then click OK and highs will separate it into its own file and import it is in the script. So we'll do that with each one. Okay, so now all of this, all of these uh, separate files, so if we go to our project folder, go to scripts, we can see all of our files there now. So each thing is separate and uh, that's great. It means we can open them up in different tabs in highs and work on each one. And if we make a change in here, for example, it says PNL HDSR there. If I just delete that and hit F5, it's going to write that change to the file because I hit F5, so you can see it's written that change. So that, that's really good because it means if highs crashes, that, that change has been saved. And all I had to do is hit F5. I didn't actually have to save the project. So it's really uh, a good habit to get into to work with separate files like this. And it keeps your on in it looking really nice and uh, tidy. Um, I hope you found it interesting and festive and jolly. I'll push this project to a public Git repo. So if you want to play around with it, you can do. Uh, I'll also there, I'll put download links to the actual compiled uh, plugin. So if you just want to use this as an instrument in a project, you're welcome to. I'll also post all the samples on GitHub except for the extra samples, which those will be posted to Patreon. So if you want to have some extra samples to play with, those will be on Patreon. All of this um, that I'm publishing today is public domain, so use it for any purpose you want, and you can reuse the samples in anything that you want. Thank you very much for joining me. Have a wonderful Christmas and New Year. Thank you to all my wonderful supporters on Patreon. You've really made a big difference. You really helped boost this channel and allowed me to uh, churn out quite a lot of videos this year. So that's all for 2022, and I will see you next year.